Well, speaking of roller coasters, I've specifically not watched any of your interviews or read anything recently outside of the headlines. So let me know right now why you and the UFC parted ways amicably, as you've said, and what led to that decision? I think, so the decision came, I think before my last fight, I was sort of just like in that mindset already because my body just wasn't holding up to the type of training that was needed for the type of level that I was fighting at. So it was already in my mind then. And obviously, you know, after my last loss, I fell short just a little bit. I sort of spoke to the UFC. I said, listen, I, I don't think I'm quite happy at the moment. I said, I feel like I just need a little bit of time off to get, you know, the mind and body right, whatever that means, you know, et cetera. I said, you know, let, let, I've always had a good relationship with Dana and Hunter and stuff like that. So I said, you know, let me think on it a little bit. That's what they, they actually said. They were like, you know, we're with you, Dad, and we support you. We invest in you because we do believe you can be one of the best and the champ and, and stuff like that. He went, but, you know, have some time to think on it. Don't make any harsh or rash decisions. And I was like, okay, you know what? That's fair enough. So then I went away, thought about it, you know, still had sort of the same mindset. So then I went back to them. I was like, listen, I wouldn't mind if you re would release me. You know, we're, we're friends. We've got good relationships, business and personally. You know, is that is that a possibility? They're like, yeah, no problem. Till you know, we'll send over the, the the necessary paperwork, stuff like that. So then I woke up one morning because obviously it will have been daytime there in Vegas, and you know, it had all been sent over, but it come out because it was one of an algorithms to do with the UFC that I'll that until it got caught. And I messaged him. I was like, make sure you know you tell everyone that I asked to be released. You know. So, so, so myself and that he's like yeah no problem I, I'll make sure Dana mentions it in an interview and then he, he did he was like you know I think Till will be back real soon so you never hear of that mm -hmm. you know you don't hear of that much like fighters leaving and, and leaving on good terms especially with Dana because you know this fight is always shitting on Dana and Dana's always like talking about the fight so it's good for me to have left and, and know that that door's still open which I will be back there in two years time I'm, I'm fully confident of that and hopefully I'll be a new and revi revitalised that until but for the meantime I've got some little bits of business to take care of and stuff like that so you know that that's that's the story with it all mate that's very specific you said two years so you know that there's a two-year window that you're going to do what you want to do in that period and you're going to be back in the UFC so you've got that vision board in your mind already 100% what led ultimately to this decision to break away from the UFC? You said it, is it, is it just physical? Is it mental, psychological? What is it that you need to fix during this time of the UFC? Physically, mentally, and financially. I haven't said okay. that yet. Yeah, so it's physical, mental, and financial. What does that mean? I can make an absolute break ton load of money now in two years, fighting half the fight. If, let's say I do a few striking battles because it's only half fighting in it. Let's have it right. And uh, Conor McGregor said it famously against Mayweather. It's only half a fight boxing, stuff like that. And I'm not saying specifically boxing. Yeah. It could be taekwondo, karate for all that, you know, I care. Uh, so I do half a fight, which is, in my opinion, easier than UFC. I don't want to disrespect any, any of these other sports. Uh, I do that. Uh, I get the, the, the mind right. I get the body right. And I burst back into the UFC, 32, fresh-faced, fresh unscathed, untouched. And, you know, hopefully get that world title. I know people doubt me. I know people say, oh, you know, this, that. But that, that's been planning my dream. If I fall short, I can say, you know what? I fell short and I give it me all. So it is what it is. I'm still a legend of the sport. Whatever. Like, okay. But I don't I don't think I'll fall short if, if my plan goes to in the next six years <laughs> well you have to dream big i mean if you if that's not your mindset then you can't be in the sport really can you of course like if you're not if you're not willing to dream big and say it out loud there's no point being in it you know you might as well just go and teach jujitsu or teach some psych and go become a coach i don't want that quite yet. like people have said to me you know you could open a gym and you could smash it with that and stuff like that i don't want to open a gym i want to i want to fight for what i want to fight for i'm still I'm young, man. I'm 30. I've oh, got a lot, many years left in this game. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. And hey, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Drop a comment. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Share the video with your friends. Help me blow this whole thing up. And hey, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more conversations, more interviews, and more amazing video content coming soon.